This video is for educational purposes only. Always consult your doctor before making health changes. That's the sound of a perfectly beating heart. The engine that starts the moment you are born and doesn't stop until your last breath. The heart is made of a special type of muscle found nowhere else in the body. One that allows electrical impulses to spread rapidly creating coordinated rhythmic and involuntary contractions, a masterpiece of biological engineering. To function, it needs a constant supply of oxygen and nutrients. Even a few seconds of interruption can weaken its function or cause irreversible damage. Every single day, around 8,200 people in India suffer a heart attack. Only 600 to 900 survive. A chilling reminder that prevention is always better than cure. Hello, this is Trilok. I'm a dietitian. Today, we will explore the various factors that lead to heart disease and more importantly, how you can lower your risk through simple science-based nutrition and lifestyle choices. But first, let's look at some evidence from the past and present showing how heart disease actually develops. After World War II, doctors made a shocking discovery. In a 1953 Journal of the American Medical Association study, they examined 300 autopsies of US soldiers who were killed in the Korean War. Average age, just 22 years. To their surprise, over 75% of these young soldiers already had early signs of artery blockage, and some even had more than 50% narrowing of their coronary arteries, despite being young, active, and physically fit. Jumping ahead to 1999, a large multicenter autopsy study examined individuals aged 15 to 34 years who had died due to unnatural causes. Researchers found fibrous plaques and fatty streaks in both the coronary arteries and the aorta, proving that the process of atherosclerosis begins silently even in youth. And coming to recent Indian data, a 2019 autopsy-based study from Kerala examined coronary arteries of 77 individuals under the age of 40. They found that more than 40% blockage was present in 76% of these cases. All these studies lead to a single powerful conclusion. Atherosclerosis begins in the teens and progresses silently into adulthood. It all starts in the arteries. Arteries are the blood vessels that supply oxygen-rich blood to all parts of the body. And the arteries that supply the heart muscle are called coronary arteries. Now let's see how this damage actually begins. An artery has three layers. The innermost layer called the endothelium is smooth and friction-free, allowing blood to flow easily. It also produces a powerful gas called nitric oxide that relaxes and widens arteries whenever your body needs more blood, such as during exercise or stress. The problem begins when this endothelium becomes damaged. Several factors can injure this delicate lining, including high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, high cholesterol, air pollution and chronic stress. Once damaged, the surface becomes rough, allowing LDL cholesterol and other fatty particles to stick and seep into the middle layer of the artery. Your immune system detects the buildup of LDL particles in this layer and sends immune cells called macrophages to clean up the site. These cells begin swallowing the trapped LDL particles. But when they eat more than they can handle, they get overloaded and die right there in the artery wall, forming what are known as foam cells. When many foam cells accumulate, they form what's known as a fatty streak the earliest visible sign of atherosclerosis. Next, platelets arrive, kicking off the body's repair response, which triggers the smooth muscle cells to migrate into this area and begin forming a collagen patch, creating a fibrous cap over the damaged site. This process is called fibrosis. But after all this patchwork, the artery is no longer as smooth or flexible as before, and it gradually becomes narrower and stiffer. This slow damage process called atherosclerosis can start as early as your 20s and it may silently progress over the next 3 to 4 decades. But with today's poor diet and lifestyle, these dangerous blockages can develop even earlier, sometimes even by the age of 35 or 40. Now let's go through the factors that cause this damage. The main factors that directly injure the arteries are smoking, air pollution, 
high blood pressure, chronic inflammation, a diet low in antioxidants and arterial calcification which is the hardening of the arteries. Smoking damages the delicate endothelial layer, the inner lining of arteries, leading to reduced nitric oxide production and poor dilation. Tobacco smoke contains thousands of harmful chemicals that cause oxidative stress and inflammation in the artery wall. It also makes blood stickier, increases clot formation and constricts blood vessels through nicotine's effect on the nervous system. Over time, smoking lowers HDL, the good cholesterol, and rises LDL, the bad cholesterol, creating the perfect setup for plaque formation. Chronic inflammation, whether from long-term infections, autoimmune disorders, or even gum disease, also directly damages the endothelium and accelerates plaque growth. And coming to air pollution, the Lancet Commission on Pollution and Health estimated that air pollution causes over 9 million premature deaths globally each year, and about half of those are due to heart disease and stroke. Air pollution doesn't just harm the lungs, it silently inflames and stiffens our arteries. Now that we have covered the factors that cause direct damage to the arteries, let's move to the internal metabolic changes that silently push heart disease forward. Obesity, especially central obesity, leads to fatty liver, which rises triglycerides and LDL cholesterol levels in the blood. Fatty liver also promotes insulin resistance, which can progress to type 2 diabetes. Persistently high blood sugar and insulin levels injure the artery lining. Another important factor is homocysteine. It's a natural chemical produced when we digest protein, derived from an amino acid called methionine. Normally, your body breaks it down using vitamin B6, B9 and B12. But if these are deficient or if your protein intake is excessive, homocysteine builds up in the blood. High levels are dangerous. They damage the arterial lining, increase clotting and accelerate plaque buildup, even when cholesterol is normal. If you look closely, all these factors stem from the same roots. A diet high in salt, sugar, unhealthy fats and ultra-processed foods combined with nutrient deficiencies and a lack of physical activity. Beyond metabolism, even our hormones can influence our heart health. Undertreated hypothyroidism can elevate cholesterol levels, even when your diet is perfect. Left untreated, this imbalance accelerates plaque formation and increases cardiovascular risk. And finally, the part most people overlook, the lifestyle habits that quietly push everything in the wrong direction. Poor sleep and chronic stress raise cortisol levels and increase inflammation, blood pressure and insulin resistance, all of which accelerate heart disease progression. Now, let's look at what research has to say about halting or reversing this damage. Research has shown that heart disease doesn't just have to be managed. It can actually be reversed. Dr. Dean Ornish's randomized trial found that a low-fat, plant-heavy diet combined with exercise, stress management and support groups caused actual regression of coronary narrowing over five years. And Dr. Cardwell Esselstyn's long-term program with a whole food plant-based diet in patients with advanced coronary disease showed extremely low rates of further cardiac events and measurable improvements on angiography. In other words, the arteries can heal, but it takes comprehensive, consistent change. So to lower your risk or to reverse the existing damage, you need to address all the underlying factors. Keep your cholesterol, blood pressure and sugar levels in check. Optimize your nutrition. Address any vitamin and mineral deficiencies. Focus on healthy fats. Eliminate trans and saturated fats from your diet. Make sure your thyroid is healthy and it is equally important to care for your mind. Reduce your stress, improve your sleep and stay physically active. But here is the tricky part. If your goal is to prevent heart disease, then even small consistent changes can make a difference. But if you want to reverse years or even decades of damage, small steps won't be enough. You need to be consistent and disciplined with your diet and lifestyle. Only then you can expect real improvement over the coming months and years. Remember, to prevent, moderation is okay, but to reverse, you need transformation. So, start today, get all the necessary tests done, make a medication plan with your cardiologist and a structured diet plan with your dietitian, focus on your mental health, work on reducing stress, improving your sleep, 
Even simple practices like meditation can make a difference. I'm going to make the next video on the ideal diet for heart disease and another video on cholesterol and a detailed guide on the best and worst cooking oils for heart health. So make sure you are subscribed to get notified when those are out. If you found this video helpful, check out my other videos on diabetes, fatty liver and stress management, all of which are closely linked to heart disease. Thank you for watching Nutritional Perspective. I'll see you in the next video.